Right, my good people, and welcome in to the next episode of the Sweat Session Review. So as always, guys, if you are enjoying this content, be sure to like the video, comment, and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Okay, as I said in all these previous videos, lads, most of the people that do end up watching my content are not subscribed to the channel. So as I said, make the effort to like the video anytime a content, piece of content is released. Comment as well with any feedback that you might have in these hands for this video today. And then finally, make the effort to, subscri to, to subscribe, lads, if you're not subscribed already. Um, just to highlight this as well, guys, if you are interested in getting one of these reviews done, be sure to check the description of this video below and join the Discord. And if you are interested in getting this done, as I said, contact me on Discord, Alan F. Poker, and uh, we'll get you booked in for the next available slot, okay? As far as I know, I think week four is going to be free, so make sure to hit me up as soon as possible to get that booked in, okay? The only the only thing that I need you guys to do, it's a minimum of 10 and L. A minimum of 10 and L is the only restriction, okay? Um, but we can talk more about that if you send in the video itself, okay? So today we have a Brazilian player, uh, Witty. And I'm pretty sure I did one of his, one of his reviews there recently. Um, and I'll just give you guys a heads up with some of the color codings, just so you know what it is. Just give me two seconds here. So color tags are green for fish, light blue for knit, red for aggro, pink for whale donor, <laughs> uh, purple for a calling station. And that's basically it in terms of information for it today. Okay. So uh, without further ado, we'll just get into it, my good man. And as I always like to say on these videos, good luck, my man. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Okay, let me get the ball rolling. So 6-5 here, three bet and calling. I don't mind either or. And I think versus half pot here, we just mostly fold, I think. I'm not 100% sure versus half pot with this combo, Witty, if we want to be raising on this board. Um, yeah, we have some good backdoors and stuff like that, but if we turn a seven of clubs or a three of clubs for example it's not going to be great um i think i would just fold the six five here bro personally versus half pot i might be a little bit yeah i do end up folding so that's good i should probably, I should probably let you act before um i make my assumption but yeah you had the raisin thing highlighted but uh thankfully did not do that i don't think it's going to be a raise in that situation bro um Personally, I don't mind this three quarter size and bro, but usually when a straight completes like half pot is mostly used, I think, uh, in terms of frequency of bet sizings. Again, it's not going to be a mistake with this hand to do it, uh, but just in terms of like frequency of bet sizings, like bet small, bet medium, and over bets are the only ones that are primarily used here. But heuristics wise, on like flush completing turns, pair textures, like bet small is usually used. And then when you're talking about straight completing turns itself, um, a lot of the time, bet medium, aka bet 40, bet 50, bet 60 is mostly used. But definitely bet, bet, bet in this hand now. Yeah, three, three quarter size and I like here, man. We do end up getting called here, so I don't mind. Yeah, I, again, when I, when I see these hands at showdown, bro, these are not the ones you're expecting to fold, ever. But in terms of combo selection, you could argue having the eight of hearts here is bad, but you block eight, nine, you're going to have eight, nine in this line, so... Using the same blockers with bluffs that you will have with value, man, is always a good heuristic, and theory will always do that anyways. So I'm happy enough with that bluff, for sure. Okay, we get cold called here by, obviously, two weaker players. Uh, we just have an easy all-in here now. Like, I, I would expect this guy in the cutoff to be very, very strong here. Um, the thing is, if he has, like, tens, jacks, and arguably queens, I think he should just, like, four-bet rip here. I don't think he should have four-bets, like, non-four-bet all-ins in this situation because, like, there's basically, what, 7, 14, 21, 22, 23 big blinds of dead money in the middle here, man. You're just going to be incentivized to probably just fight a four-bet jam here and not really have four, like, non-four-bet all-in sizes, in my opinion. But I don't expect this to be a bluff from the cutoff here, nine times out of ten. Yeah, I'm very surprised by that because usually what happens in that situation where people do end up four-betting in that line, man, 
when there's a cold caller or whatever, it's usually a strong range, but as I said, he should just have four bet all-ins there, in my opinion, because there's so much dead money in the middle. Like, as I said, that 22, 23 big blind to dead money in the middle, um, that's 25% of, like, 100 big blind stack, man. So you're just incentivized to just, like, four bet jam there and just try and take down all that dead money. But at the same time, when they decide not to do that, it's probably going to be a little bit on the stronger side, given that he's getting a great price to call with most of his range there, I would say. But yeah, obviously just getting the kings in. And I like this open and wider as well. I'm assuming that's what you've taken from, you know, both my content and just streams in general, bro. And I'm sure you've saw the efficiency of that as well in terms of executing it. These guys had open from min as well, man. I think they're just trying to steal the blind. So I really like just like shifting the most of the mixed strategies to a high frequency tree bet, if not pure, depending on the frequency in theory. So I really like this tree bet with Jack9. A lot of them guys that said that are opening for min are just going to be trying to steal the blinds uh, in that dynamic. A7 here, I would probably just fold, bro. Um, again, I don't mind 4-betting this some of the time, and I know Theory probably will at a frequency, but I would mostly just stick to Ace5, Ace4, maybe some Ace3, and an Ace10 suited plus most of the time. Now, if you have a reason to go a little bit more aggressive with four bets against him, I don't mind that. But, um, you know, just in terms of, like, specific combos, ace-3, ace-4, ace-5, and then ace-10+, plus, depending. I mean, arguably, this ace-10 might have some showdown value here, bro. Like, I'd bluff a lot of, like, king high, queen high, jack high, ten high... Maybe like ace four, ace two, I'd start bluffing here. I think ace ten is close, man. Between bet and check. Yeah, we have a huge range advantage here, but we can't just like barrel everything. And I think this ace ten I would probably play the exact same way that you did here. I like a pot size bet here on the turn, man, with uh King King Queen. Yeah, I like the stupid min raise as well. <laughs> probably a chop though. Yeah, oh my god, that's so bad. <laughs> so bad with uh Queen Jack there. I don't mind this bluff on the river, FYI, but you cannot call him in, Riz. Yeah, probably going that direction, man. That might, that might just be a tilt call. I might not mark that guy as a fish. But yeah, three quarters here is completely fine with King Queen, man. As I said, just personal preference there. I might go for a pot size bet myself, but I don't think it matters too much. Yeah, probably a more reasonable tag there, I would say. Hold on a second, man. I need to uh, fill up this fucking vape. My apologies. I won't uh, add this or not from the recording. I should have done this beforehand. This is my bad. Just give me a moment, sorry. This is something I should have done before we started the recording. But anyways. Addiction is a, is a hell of a thing, lads. For nicotine, eh? Anyways. Alright, back to this. It's not a splash pot, mate. <laughs> Maybe you misread the board, eh? I misread the texture of pocket three there. Definitely thought it was a splash pot. I think uh, I don't mind opening this with a fish in the blind, man. Arguably two fishes in the blinds. Um, I, 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 as I said, I don't mind this open, but I think I would always fall like two twos through fours under the gun. Unless it's for the reason that there's tight players behind, which you can see 21, 16, 11, 45, and 8. So I don't mind expanding with the fours under the gun there. But I think a good baseline is just fold twos through fours there in most situations, man, under the gun. Because they're going to be super low frequency, man. And it's just not going to be, like, necessary to open them <laughs> in, in, in majority of games. As I said, for me personally, I'm mostly doing that. Um, with that with that part of my range, the twos through fours, just folding, opening fives plus. I uh, definitely call in here for sure. And I think I just want to take a stab here on the turn now. I think three quarters is fine. 
I think I would just take a stab here on the turn, uh, Witty, because there's going to be a pretty big overfold in this line when they bet small on the flop and then check turn. So you're going to be incentivized to just stab very, very aggressively. You know, you do have some equity as well, uh, but probably just checking this down now. Although maybe turning this into a bluff is better. I would just stab the turn here, bro, give up river. Um, but I think checking this down now is going to be fine. And you're going to get sixes to fold on the turn there, bro. So definitely get into the habit that when you float the flop in these positions and they check the turn to just stab very, very aggressively, man, because of the overfold. And I, I would have just bet like either pot size or three quarters on the turn there with uh, King 10. And um, yeah, just would have given up on the river if I got check call. But you are going to get better hands to fold there, bro, which is important to take into account. But like the thing is, man, when you know nodes are going to be overfolded, bro, like strategies of a lot of hands just like start becoming pure bets. Um, and that's going to be a, an example of that. Like people are just not going to protect their range enough on the turn, bro, primarily. And, you know, on these games, you're going to have a lot more exploits in terms of, like, executing. Because people are just going to, like, have not any way close to, you know, balance frequency or, or protecting ranges and all that jazz, man. Uh, Ace-10 just fucking fold here, bro. Good man. There's <laughs> twice now you've gone for the raise option and I'm just like, eh, don't do it, bro. Which I definitely fold in that ace 10 minute. Definitely. Um, I don't mind either or here with King 8. Like King 6, King 7 I would always bet here. I think King 8 I think it's fine to check back some of the time. If not most of the time to be fair. I'm not 100% sure. I don't aim for, per per uh, for perfection in terms of frequencies. I'm just trying to adjust accordingly against who I'm against. I definitely would bet in this delay C bet line as well bro with this King 8. There's going to be a big overfold in this line as well. For sure. Definitely bluff the river now, regardless. Right. I'm not sure about this one. What's this guy's stats? 24, 21. Small sample. What was the seasons? Sorry, no, just let me go back to this. Yeah, again, I know that's going to fuck up the recording, bro. Just bear with me. I need to review this hand because it's important. So he limps pre-flop. Stabs the flop. Bets the turn. I, I, I don't think I fold this Jack 8, would he? Because he's literally saying that he limped Ace King here. We block 8-9, which is very, very relevant. I actually don't think I fold here, bro. I'd be happy enough paying this off given, given it was a limp pot. Because he's repping extremely polar here, bro. And if these guys aren't limping the strong hands that they are supposed to do, like the ace-king, the aces, kings every now and again, and then, like, you know, some queen-jack, jack-10, etc. This is very, very polarizing, bro. And uh, I don't think I fold here in this situation, personally. I, again, I don't expect to be right there that often, but I, I think I would call... And this king eight, we have to bluff, man. Just bet the turn, check back river. If you check back the turn, you have to bet river here, bro, with king eight. Like, if I had king queen or king ten, I think I would check that back. But king eight, king nine, and below, have to start bluffing there, bro. But just stab the turn in that delay C bet line, witty, because there's going to be an overfold in it. So you're just, again, you're going to be incentivized to just bet very, very aggressively in that delay C bet line. But at the jack eight, it's very, very interesting, bro. It's very, very interesting. I, I just would have called there mostly out of curiosity, man, to be honest with you. Because it's a limp pot. And as I said, I don't expect people to, you know, limp, limp enough traps there primarily. So as I said, I think I might have flicked in a call there with the Jack 8 because of the limp preflop and just how polarized he went on the river for 3x pot. I mean, you, you, your hand is a pure bluff catcher there, man. But like, given the pole, or the pre-flop dynamic, I, 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 I think I would have flicked in a call there. I would have been okay with it. I wouldn't have been really too biased about it, is what I mean. Seems fine with the sevens. But definitely that Jack Eight hand brawl was quite interesting, for sure.
But yeah, as I said, when I rewind on the recording, it does fuck it up on VLC, the software I'm using to play the video. So apologies over that, man. But as I said, it does eventually catch up where that grey screen eventually goes. Uh, we'll just fold here, man, with the Queen Jacks. Not a lot we can do there. I might call that 7-4 against the... Uh, it's probably fine against an 18-V pip just to fold. It's probably going to be opening a lot tighter there, so you're going to be incentivized to just, like, not call as wide because the race first in range. But, yeah. Seems fine with the 10-4 as well. Some backdoor equity and all that stuff. Uh, I think I just ripped this, bro, because of the 40 big blind stack. Again, like that, man, there's like 17 big blinds of dead money here in the middle, bro. I would just... I, th I think just mostly 4-bet jamming, this is going to be fine. But, again, 4-betting is, is probably still okay. It's not going to be a mistake either way. But maybe making it the size that you did to keep this guy in the pot is not going to be a bad strategy at all. I like this sizing as well. Well played. But yeah, I think I might just 4-bet rip that bro because of the 40 big blind stack in the small blind. But yeah, not, uh, not a mistake either way. For sure. Yeah, definitely want to cold call the 4s here. For sure. I think Jax is already very, very close here. And I might just end up folding. To be told, I really like that fold with Jax. A lot of people would not find that fold there, man. I'm not going to say majority would find the fold, but I think a lot of guys on these stakes wouldn't be situationally aware about how Jax actually... How, how well Jax plays in that exact situation. Like, in theory, that's probably going to be a low-frequency 4-bet, high-frequency fold, man, so... I really like that fold. And he didn't really think too much about it as well, which was good. I like this bluff on the river river as well with fours. I really, really do. You've no showdown value here, Braun. There's going to be a big overfold in that check, check, multi-way. So well played. Um, again, mostly just calling here with the ace jack. I'm probably just trying to check this down, I guess. Uh, I will call one versus half pot here. There's still some bluffs in his range here, like 5x, 6x, jack 10, 8, 9, 10, etc. But I would call call for one here um, in this situation with the ace jack. I think that's too big of an overfold there, bro. Um, I'm not going to say it's it's a printing call by any means, but definitely don't want to be overfolding in that uh, delay c-bet line, facing a delay c-bet. Yeah, I, I, would, I would peel that one there, bro, for the half pod. Like, versus three quarters, I would always fold, but versus half pod, I think we can peel. But I'm not overly happy about it. Like, I, I get the um, hesitation. Or the, the, the not knowing what you should or shouldn't do, but I think I would just peel for one and just see what happens on the river. Seems good as well. Get into the habit of marking them guys as well, Witty. That snap fold. It's good information to have in future. That when you're in the exact same spot with that guy in the big blind, you can open it a little bit wider because he has auto fold on. Don't, don't be one of those guys as well, man, that has that auto fold or uses that auto fold from the big blind. Because there's times there that, you've, that you saw already that people will open for min. And um, you just don't want to be folding a lot of your range. Like the bottom of your range, yeah, like 7-3 off, 7-2 off, 8-3 off, etc. But stuff like 6-3, 6-4 off can still be peeled versus the min open, you know. So don't, just, just, just don't fast fold is what I'm getting at. Um, this is the same guy you 4-bet with the A7 there. So it's going to be one or the other against that guy, I guess. I 
I don't mind either or against these guys. As I said, eights against the min open man will be three bet at a frequency. Uh, mostly just checking back here now. Um, we have to call versus the three quarters here, not having clubs in our hands. Yeah, some 7 8 did get there, some 2x got there, some 7x gets there now. But there's still available bluffs here, man. So it's not the nicest board to bluff catch here, but I, I am not folding like nines in this line. Yeah, this I, I would definitely call here as well. And this is what I mean. You can't fold in that line, bro. Uh, I think I would go a little bit bigger here with the pocket eights in this situation. I think this is a spot where I would just go for an overbet here. Do the same thing with any 4, 5, 7, 5, 9, 10, jack 10, flush draws, etc. But yeah, overfolding that line is criminal. So I don't mind either or size and wise. I think with that hand, we just want to start a pile of money in the middle. But yeah, that's definitely going to be a call with the nines, man. I think he should fold flop already. I didn't see what size he used. But I think versus bet small, it might be okay to call. Versus half pot, I'm not a big fan of it. In his shoes. And uh, I wouldn't really call from the small blind, um, Witty. Because you just like extremely cap your range in this situation. Uh, if that was multi-way, I don't mind it. If it was a fish in the big blind where they're not going to be squeezing, they're just going to be cold calling most of the time, I think it's fine to cold call the sevens. But given it's a 24 VP player behind, man, probably some form of a reg would mostly just play three better fold in that dynamic or in that exact situation. But playing pretty well overall in this recording so far, bro. You know, there's obviously been a few things highlighted, you know, pre and post. But nothing too, too crazy so far. Bit of another, what, 20 minutes to get through in this recording. Uh, mostly, if only, calling the king-queen here. If this guy is, let me just check the colour coding, sorry. Yeah, so light blue is a knit, so... Yeah. Um, I think either or is fine here. I think if I king queen suit it, which we probably don't have much of in this line because we're going to squeeze that pre flop. Part of me fucking wants to raise here, but I don't think we can fold when we're getting a really good price where our king or queen could be live as well. But against the nace, probably less incentivized to do it. Uh, definitely raising this river here. Yeah. Defo. I might, I might actually bet the river, to be honest with you, man. Or bet the turn, excuse me. With this blockers. Uh, we can't fold here, man. Would raise. Like what, like, what value is he doing this with? You know, this is just very, very capped here. And you will have some flush draws that are supposed to check back on this turn. It just depends what you're cold calling on the button here, bro. But I think six is with a diamond there. I like raising. But just because of the of the size he used, you know, versus a min bet there, I'm definitely going to raise there in that situation. It's an easy fall to your odds. Put my fucking fall on silent, mate. Sorry. I think I'd stay betting the ace-king on the turn as well, bro. Like, an ace or a king is going to be good. You're going to get better hands to fold here itself. Like, under pairs to the nine, put a lot of pressure on, like, 9x in general. Even make some queen x indifferent on the turn. It's just a good combo to bet, 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 man, because you're going to have king x of diamonds in this line. So, having this blocker to the, you know, same value portion of your range that you're going to use when you bet, bet, bet here... Having this blocker with the king of diamonds is going to be a good bet, bet, bet hand. And I, I would just check this back now in this line. And like he should obviously bluff that, but just bet it on the turn, bro. Bet river as well with that combo is what I would recommend. Very, very passive profile for sure. 
It's going to be a low frequency tree or tree bed as well in these positions. And I actually don't mind nearly pure calling it against this color, color tag. I uh, just checked down the 7 8 here. This is a guy from the previous hand with like. I, I wouldn't even value about this, bro. Yeah. I, 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 I don't really like this on the river. Yeah. I think that's a little bit too thin. Like, this guy has shown that he's just very, very passive from the previous hands. Um, and I just think with like fourth pair, arguably third pair, depending. Um, I wouldn't value about this. If I had ace, ace, I might consider it. But I think this is a little bit too thin with 7 8, man. I think I would just check back the river itself. Yeah, this seems okay. It seems okay. He's fine with the ace jack. You definitely see that a little bit more aggressively than monotone boards as well, man. As the imposition player in single raise pot, people are not going to be not defending correctly on them boards. They're also probably under raising too. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Maybe they actually are over raising on monotone boards, but they're over folding as well, which is kind of um, counterintuitive, I guess. Yeah, so uh, you seem to be doing this based on who's in the blinds, man, which I'm okay with in terms of like these hands, like the under pairs or the, the low pocket pairs, excuse me, and these just mixed strategies in general. So I don't mind this. Well, I, I, I'm obviously referencing how wide you're opening with X, Y, and Z in the big blinds or in the blinds in general. So facing a pot size bet here, it's a little bit scary. I think I would just check this back on the turn now to Bluff Catch River, yeah. I like this. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I fold here, but I expect to lose here most of the time. My heuristic against Fishman, when they bet pot in a lot of lines, situation dependent, of course, um, is never fold top pair most of the time. And I'm definitely not folding ace jack with the jack of hearts. Ever. But I'm not happy about this. I... Don't want to do this against a fish, bro. I, 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 what I would do there, man, is call that hand. And if I was wrong, I would mark that guy with that information of how he played what, whatever part of his range there. So, like, I would call that river just for information purposes. Um, you know, I don't expect to win too often there. But I would always call Ace Jack there and just see what happens in terms of showdown and just make a note on that. Is what I would do. But I think fold an ace jack there, bro. I'm not a big fan of it. But it might be the right play. It's just hard to say. But as I said, this is why I would call there and just, you know, for information, just like, okay, this guy did this in a bet check, bet line, bet pot, bet check turn, pot river. Um, you know. And just make a note of what he did that with. Is what I would do anyways. I think this Jack 10 is too wide here as well. So what I would what I always incentivize guys in terms of like, okay, well, how wide do I ISO here? If when you're when you're on the cutoff here, bro, isolate what you would open in the hijack. Because you're not supposed you're supposed to have a little bit of a tighter range when you are ISOing here. So if you're on the button, for example, I'd isolate what I what I would open on the cutoff. And if I'm on the cutoff, I would op uh, isolate, excuse me, what I would open in the hijack. Maybe get rid of the mixed strategies and just open the pure ones is what I would recommend. Seems fine with the jack 10 as well. Probably just make that bet check hand. Getting raised here versus three quarters is not great. Now, in saying that, I don't expect this guy to raise, like, ace-10, jack-10, or anything like that. So, I'm assuming this is just mostly going to be king-queen. So, our outs are probably live here. 
Like, as I said, I don't expect this guy to raise ace ten, ace jack, um, jack ten against three quarters most of the time. So as I said, this is very very close in the turn, bro. But you could argue that when the board pairs here, maybe just folding this hand is probably best. So I don't mind that. I think it's fine. As I said, I don't expect people to raise flop there with like two pairs, even though they're probably supposed to add a frequency. But I think a lot of people versus three quarters would mostly just call in the formations. And probably, yeah, just checking down this ace 10 seems fine. Yeah, he should, again, bluff that, but just goes to show the tendency of some of these lads. But it's, it's very important that you're making that note, bro. Very important. Getting a lot of these three bet calls, man, in the on this pool. Or call callers, I should say. I think I would just mostly check this hand here against the cutoff. We do have to be worried about this guy behind as well. Getting called in two spots here ain't great, man. There's an argument to maybe go small here again, just try and target some of the under pairs to the queen against the guy in the big blind. But we have to worry about the guy in the cutoff that called as well, so, you know, just be conscious of that. I'm not a big fan of check calling on the turn, bro. I'm not a big fan of check calling on the turn. I think I would just check fold, honestly. But the thing is, man, on certain rivers like this, we don't know if our outs are clean. Now, again, when we improve like we did, I'm never going to fold here, but... I don't know if I like the check call on the turn, personally. Yeah, I mean, there was an argument to just stay betting the turn yourself, man. But I think check call on the turn is a mistake, personally. Even though it's against the recreational, they did call call a three bet, man. So the range isn't going to be as wide as would we'll say when they open and then call the three bet. But yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of calling the turn personally, but you know, we can't be results orientated as well that he turned up with ace 10. You were technically ahead of that range on the turn and just got a little bit unlucky by improving on the river to a king. But yeah, as I said, I'm a little bit less, um, I don't know, to check calling the turn didn't seem great. Especially out of position. I think that's the main thing, just being out of position there. I like this check raise as well. And I'm definitely going to stay barreling on this turn. Nicely played. Probably would have... Mm, maybe... I, I, I would strongly consider betting that river again, by the way, but... I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just get the fold on the turn, which is great. Basing a fucking five and a half X here, man. Yeah, obviously gonna be three betting this. This seems fine. You flop well. Um it's close between checking back on the turn here to capitalize on an overbluff. We have the ace of spades here, so that's good because we unblock we block some of the value hands, we'll say if a flush completes on the river. So that means there's gonna be more bluffs. Um, but this hand against this guy can probably go for three streets of value, man, honestly. I would assume. But I don't mind checking this back. Now, we have to be a little bit conscious here that Queen Jack gets there. Yeah, I think this... I, 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 I think this is good. I, I, I don't think it matters too much what you do for size in here, but I would probably just go half pot here myself, personally. I think Jax is already very, 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 very close in the turn here. So, yeah, I, I, I think this is well played with the ace-king. I, I, the, the, like, regardless of what you end up doing here on the river, bro, um, I think the turn play is the main thing that we want to take into consideration here um, in, in terms of, like, checking back mostly. So, as I said, it doesn't matter what you end up doing on the river there, bro, but um, I, like, I like the all-in. I think against that profile, it's going to be, you know... It's a little bit unfortunate for him because... I like to fold with the jacks. It's a little bit unfortunate for him because he rivers the ace. But the thing is, when you jam there, bro, you are going to get a bunch of folds there. And the only hands that you will get called by is ace-x. Um, which we obviously block quite a bit. 
So as I said, that's the reason why I might have went half pot. But if I bet half pot and get raised, I'm going to be calling against that profile in that line. Because they will over bluff. But yeah, as I said, the main thing that I'm happy with is the turn check back. Always a good risk to get in, the, in, them, in them lines against fish, man, is to check back hands that can't go for three streets of value to capitalize on an over bluff on the river. It's close here because we unblock all the jack 10. We unblock king jack as well. I might bet this again on the turn to check back river, bro. I might just give this up on the river, man. Personally. E e either that or go for a small bet like you did. Just try and target them Jack-10. And I think he's going to be very inelastic here with, like, King-Jack, King-10 itself. So I'll, I I really like this size on the river, man. Just to, just to target some of the under pairs itself. Um, you, you might still be winning here with, like, 8 high if he's got, like, 4s, 5s, 6s or something like that. But um, I like the small sizing that you did. Like, probably for a bet medium and below there, he's going to be very inelastic with, like, King X, as I mentioned, King 10, King Jack. We are going to lose to, like, Pocket 9s there, Jack 10, etc. Uh, probably mostly just calling the Queens here, I would say. Seems okay. I might lead the five, Ace 5 here, yeah. I think this is good. I might go for a smaller size though. It's not the best river, though. I think we can still bet three quarters here and just put pressure on Jack X. Maybe some under pairs to the Jack as well, if that still continues on the turn. Like, as I said, you're going to have four or five in this line, bro. You're still going to have sets, two pairs that want to bet three quarters here on the river. And having the five of diamonds in your hands, you're blocking four or five, which you're going to have in this situation as well. I definitely like betting this river again. Yeah, I, I would still bluff this river, bro. Yeah. Yeah, and this is exactly why. So always, always, always have in mind, bro, that when you have these blockers to, to, to value portions of your range, 5x, 4x here, you're going to have ace, 4, ace, 5, you're going to have, like, queen, 4 suited, whatever else on top of that. The amount of hands you want to still bet on this river, bro, because if you check, the, you're not going to check 4, 5 on the river here, man. You're not going to check sets, but you're not going to go very, very big here with that portion of your range because he can still have some flushes in his, in his line as well. So you still want to be able to value best some of these hands. And I think three quarters here most of the time is what I would use on the river itself. But that's definitely a missed opportunity there. Now, again, if he calls with nines in that river, man, just understand that you're still going to have two pairs. You're going to have straights. You're going to have sets. That if he's overcalling that hand every time, he's going to get punished eventually. And you can just value about the S10 here now. Yeah. But I think that's a good thing to have in mind, um, Witty, in terms of like, you know, when you should or shouldn't do X or Y in terms of bluff and that. Like, if you have these blockers um, to, you know, draws completing or just draws in general, like, you're going to have value in that same line within the same blockers. So, it's always, like, Thierry will always bluff blockers left, right, and center, man. It's just there's going to be certain different sizes and certain different runouts where it's not going to polarize because in position or the villain can still have some value, some better hands itself. As I said, that flush complete in river, he's going to have flushes in that line as well that calls the turn, that improves on the river. But he's not only going to have flushes, if you know what I mean. So you can still happily value about your two pairs, your straights, sets, etc. I like the stab as well with the 7-3. Uh, this I would just fold, man. King-Queen is too wide here in this situation. So yeah, I would just fold this, bro. We'll just fold this. You're probably basing it off his stats, man. And I would not be called 4-bet bluffing fish here. And this guy is kind of trending that direction in terms of frequencies. You know, the PFR, the VPIP, etc. So, d just don't 4-bet bluff fish, man. Seriously. Just don't 4-bet bluff fish and you're going to be pretty good in the long run. Most of the time, anyways. And now we just have to fold. This might not be a bad hand to check back as well, man, to realize equity. If I had king... 
if I somehow had King Queen off like you had here and I had King Queen with a heart, I would always bet. But, you know, I think King Queen there without a heart, maybe checking it back some of the time is going to be a good play as well. The thing is, man, cold four bet pots, nobody has studied them because they're so fucking infrequent on a session by session basis. So I don't expect people to, you know, raise correctly. I don't expect people to bluff correctly. Again, no dependent, but, you know, just having these somewhat of heuristics with hands that like, you know, always have in mind, man, when you decide to see bet in any situation that if you get raised with this hand, are you happy? And if the answer is no, bro, you're definitely, you can definitely check back more often. I think mostly just calling here. I think we can donk on these flush completing turns as well. I might just jam all in here on the river, bro. Like if I had nines or tens here with a heart, I would turn this into a bluff, bro. With them blockers. So I don't mind the sizing you're doing here, man, but there's going to be an overfold in that line regardless. But just again, in terms of like blockers and like, you know, value parts of your range using them relevant blockers, man, like nines, tens with a heart, I would always turn into a bluff. I'm probably just jam all in. And if I have ace jack like you had there, going to play it the exact same way. Like, you're going to be polarizing that spot, man, with flushes. So, you know, having them nines and tens with a heart there is going to be important in terms of, like, you know, finding the bluff combos in that line. I think I would, against this stack size, it's going to be close, man. I just fold there. Although, arguably against that guy, lad, calling king high there might not be a mistake. That's what I mean. <laughs> I think we should call with the king queen or king jack, man, in that line against pot size. Fish will over bluff that line, bro. But I think just double barrel in the turn for half pot is going to be a better strategy than checking back uh, like he did, man. Like, I don't, I don't mind bet folding king jack there against the fish because it just doesn't matter against that profile, you know? It doesn't matter too much, I mean. But I think I would call on that river with the King Jack in that line against the Recreational. He turned over the pocket trees there, so kind of highlights my point. Um, mostly calling here, as I said. This is similar to a hand we spoke about earlier, bro, where, where our knit was involved. Um, I think either or is fine here. I think Ace-10 can check back. I think it can best. I don't think it matters too much. Ah, uh, we just fold here now, I guess. Yeah. Now, ar arguably, man, you can just always barrel equity on the turn and just give up the river. Well, you know, Theory's definitely going to check back Ace-10 there. I'm not going to say a decent portion. I don't know exactly, but it'll, it will definitely check back that combo. I think, like, if you had ace-4, ace-5, ace-3, ace-2, it's going to bet that more often. But I think with ace-10 there, it's going to be a little bit closer. Or it's definitely going to be a, a lot more mixed bet and check. Yeah, I like the sizing as well. 19.5 is what I do exactly myself, bro. Something around that 2.8 to 2.9 max, give or take. So a very, very good board for your range here, bro. And I like the sizing you're doing. 10% here is good. Or there or thereabouts. I think I might turn this hand into a bluff now. In this situation. As I said, this board is so good for your range, man, that I think Ace Jack is already going to be turned into a bluff here, in my opinion. So I might just bet, bet, bet this hand. Like, he's meant to have some Ace King in this line here, where I don't think people are going to do it in these formations. So basically, Queens is meant to go in the middle here. Jacks, I think, is going to be a mixed strategy. I think tens is going to be a pure call. Um, so he's very, very capped with nuts here, in my opinion. He's going to have aces, don't get me wrong. He might have kings at a frequency, fair enough. But I think when we have such a good range advantage on this board here, bro, um, I, I will probably just bet, bet, bet this hand in these formations. Or just in this specific situation itself. I don't mind this 10% on the river, man. Against this profile, I think bet folding is fine. But I think it also our strategy in that hand should be bet, bet, bet for the reasons I mentioned. Again, this is just my perception. I could be very, very wrong here. But 
I think it's good to do that in practice, bro, on that board. A lot of the time on triple Broadway boards as the aggressor, man, they were the boards that people overfold the most in terms of, like, you know, bet check lines where you're going to attack us. Um, you as the aggressor on triple Broadway boards, man, are going to be the ones that are very, very overfolded. Believe it or not. So you can just, like, triple barrel air most of the time on triple Broadway boards, man. As the aggressor. Or if, or if you have the option to bluff. Alright, so we've got, like, a minute left on the recording, bro, so... Yeah, we're just going to get this in the middle here. I'm not overly chuffed about this min 5 bet, but it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, go figure, eh? Ar arguably, bro, you might just... You could exploit fold against that line. Given that he has that colour tag as well of a knit. Like, a knit, a knit is never 4 bet bluffing here. You know what I mean? So if this guy only ever has, like, kings or aces here, you should just pure fold ace king here, regardless. And he says, no... To the run it twice. But yeah, arguably, man, you can just fold that there, in my opinion. Um, I, I, I kind of said originally, oh, you just run it, but against this profile of mine that, that you have marked as a nit, man, I think we can just exploit fold that. I think we can just exploit fold it, bro. Like, the deviation you can make against these guys pre-flop, man, and also post-flop, is really, really insane. Um, because they're going to be under 3 betting, and this guy min 5 betting, he just never has a bluff here. So I think arguably we could just fold that ace king there and really just like not worry about ever being exploited there, overfolding that sp specific hand itself. But yeah, I assume this is probably going to be the last hand. Let me just take it down. And that's basically it, bro. Okay. So, yeah. Look, whatever's highlighted in this witty is whatever, uh, in terms of, as I said, whatever's highlighted. So, you know, as always, leave a comment below with any feedback, any questions that you may or may not have. And that goes for anyone else that's met at this fire, lads. Um, I do appreciate it. Um, and, yeah, that's basically it for today, people. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, as I always say, I'll catch you on the next one. GG.